Hello and welcome. Uh, today we're going to be doing something just a little bit different, but it is uh, still prep work for the imperfectly challenge that we're going to be doing, Perfectly Imperfect Slow Stitch Coffee Table Book. And as I said, preparation for me is always a must. Uh, if I want to get really kick-started in January so that I have some progressive things <clears throat> to show you, I have to get started now. And so I am doing that, but I want to take you along the journey with me. You might get an ideal or two, a spark of inspiration, just anything that might help you in your slow stitch journey. We all help each other and we all learn from each other. and That's a wonderful thing. Now what you're looking at here is one, <laughs> one of my drawers of fabric scraps that are all have heat bond on the back. This is a uh, one dunder, medium weight, and uh, is what I mostly use. And these are from fabric art projects that I have done in the past and uh, still do a little occasionally, but I have quite a few of these um, containers like this with uh, scraps and I don't throw them away because I use them off and on and my, my sewing and my slow stitching and my junk journaling so <clears throat> let me show you today today I'm making items that I might or might not use on my first spread in uh for my challenge uh, starting in January. But uh, since it is a landscape, I know I'm gonna need some kind of uh, items to fill that landscape, uh, little houses, uh, plants, greenery, trees, things like that. And so what better to use than these scraps? Uh, if you have a uh, applique mat or pressing mat, which you can use your iron on, then it's very easy to assemble these little items on that, pull them up as one item, and then you place them on your slow stitch and stitch them in. <clears throat> Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is what I've been working on in, in the past uh, probably oh, 45 minutes or so, uh, maybe an hour. I don't know. Uh, sometimes I can get a little fussy with things. So in here, I do have uh, some little, little, little tiny houses. I'm going to make uh, some more houses that are different sizes. These are very little and tall and skinny. So they go good in, in the background when you're wanting to uh, create a little depth of field. You put a little bigger, fatter one up front and then put these in the back and it appears uh, that um, you're going into that landscape because of that depth of field that you're creating. These are some little trees, bushes, shrubs, however. They'll, depends on what you put them next to as to what they'll become. And uh, if you put it next to a little house, of course, it's going to be a tree. But if you put it next to a big house, it's going to be a shrub. So... You can see those. Now these are just little cuts and they are ironed and fused to each other. The same way that these right here have been done. Now <clears throat> I have, you know, a little row of trees or shrubs, whatever. And then you always need just a little greenery, maybe uh, the illusion of little flower beds that you want to stick here or there around something uh, for instance, these are still stuck on, but uh, let's pull it off. It pulls off as one applique. And then if you wanted to put it next to a tree like that and stitch that together, that becomes very, very realistic at that point. So <clears throat> these little items made up in advance are so handy and they speed a process along. And when you're you're not really heavy into any particular project, but you've got an hour to sit down and piddle. Pulling out these uh, pre-bonded fabrics and just cutting them up and 
using them just bits and pieces, collaging them on top of each other to create what you want. And <clears throat> that's really, really helpful. And also, uh, we just did, or I just did a little uh, video on creating uh, small landscapes in multiples. But I just wanted to pull out one that I had made. And just to show you again, another application for these, as long as they're sizable, in other words, these are small enough to, to fit on this four by four landscape. Uh, you, when you're making them, you want to make some little, medium, and large so that when you're into projects, you've got something that's scalable for what you're doing. This is just a piece of uh, lace that's back here for a cloud. This is one of those little houses that I made. Everything is just fused together, little bits and pieces. Okay, and it goes there. Then the, this is a little piece of greenery with illusion of flowers and, of course, the tree here. And when you put this all together, then you get a little, let's bring this down, you get a little landscape. Isn't that cute? So if you... Uh, did your stitching on here and maybe did you a little a path or walkway out here and some little growth in the back behind these these heels here uh, wouldn't that be darling and it's just so doable and it's everything is there and ready because these were all pre-made and you just grab them out of your stash so that's that's the fun part of pre-making something like that okay now, uh, let me show you what some of this possibly might look like on my first spread for the challenge uh, book. Let me get these out of the way over here. Let me open this up. Okay, you probably remember the, what this looks like if you looked at that video. Uh, this is going to be my open spread. Remember, this is a coffee table size book. These pages will be that large and then bound uh, in a fabric binding. And so when you open it up to the center, this is going to be the center of the book. I have a, a landscape here that I've already uh, done and I want to use utilize it in the book. I have just auditioned these pieces out here. Um, they may or may not stay, but right now I'm happy with them. And so let's say that I wanted to um, incorporate a tiny house back in here somewhere. We don't know exactly where. We'll just move him again, maybe there, there. It's hard to know right now because we haven't got anything else on here yet. But let's say we wanted to put him there, okay? And we want to pull one of these um, little trees that have the Look, the fall foliage on it, okay. In fact, we may may put one up here next to him. We don't know where we'll end up putting this, but you can audition it around until you find somewhere maybe that you thought, okay, that might that might work there. And uh, let's bring in. Just something else that might work. Again, this is just just playing. We're not saying this is going to go here at all. 
but you can get the idea of how you can use these things um, because they're already made. Isn't that one pretty? Let's say uh, I want to incorporate that down in here as I come along and do the stitching and I want to just stitch it in as part of the stitching, okay? Part of this area down in here. I'd probably let it play over just a little bit onto that and stitch it down, okay? Uh, let's try find a different one here. And again, I'm just pulling these off of the background that I've ironed them onto. We could t take this piece off and we might use one that's a little different here. Maybe pull our tree over and stick him in there. We just, again, we just don't know until we get a, a chance to play with it a little bit how it might go. But you keep auditioning it around and it'll find a home on its own. It'll say all of a sudden, oh, that's me, that's where I want to be, and that'll work. You know, something like this uh, would be really cool. And again, they can be utilized. Some of these pieces can be utilized, again, bringing them down and positioning them around, which brings the pieces together, makes it cohesive. Okay like that. Could be a piece like that. Or since that's really so far back, let's see if we could get, I think here, that this one would look better. It's smaller in scale and it's staying in the greens. And that one would make a really great addition to that right there. In fact, I think that one probably will find its home there, okay, because it really adds in. And the colors uh, lend itself to being further back and into the color tones, okay? So anyway, I think you'll get the idea. Like I said, you just make them up and maybe they will work and maybe they won't, but the fact is you'll have them and they'll work on some project at some time, okay? Let's see, let's take this little house. We may like this little house better. And he may sit closer up. It's just fun auditioning things and seeing how they work. And believe me, everything, as you know, since you've been doing this a while, everything looks different once you have actually stitched it on. It really uh, plays in so much better once you stitch it, actually stitch it on. Here's another one of those little pieces that uh, sewn at the edge of this would be really cool. I'm hoping to put a grassy look down in here. So some of this along the edge here, like a border, would really be good. And it would pull the two pieces together really well. Can also border pieces like that, if there's something that you wanted to do with that, like that. What else can we play with here? The page is going to fold right down the middle, so I try to not put anything down the middle, okay? This one back here is doesn't do as well as the other one. It's too big and too bright to be that far back in the background, okay? So if I were to use it, I would definitely have to use it up front somewhere. I do want to use this piece because it definitely brings in the colors. Now, where exactly I do want to use it, I'm not sure at this point. You'll have to wait till I get 
this completed to know what I might do with this. But wherever it goes, I'm sure it will love its new home. So that's just an idea of something, a little things you could be doing right now in preparation of uh, starting, actually starting your book. And uh, your book does not have to be nearly this complicated or entailed. Your pages can be simpler. If you're a beginner at slow stitching and you just want to try putting together this larger book, fabric book, then use, use simple slow stitch projects. Uh, don't, don't get overwhelmed. Um, just use what you want. If you like to just lay out a larger collage, uh, you want to do a, a larger, simple landscape, do that. You want to do just a floral, we'll do that. Uh, whatever it is that you want to do, whatever, however you want to decorate your pages, does not need to be this complicated, okay? I just have this piece that I wanted to start with, and so to pull it all together. And plus, I'm one of those people that if, you know, 10 embellishments are good, well, 30 ought to be better. And so my stuff is very busy. It, it lends itself a lot. To the bohemian look because I do like to layer, 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 and layer some more. And uh, it also lends itself more to fiber art in some instances because of the same thing. It's in, a lot of times interpretive and layered in. So you do what's in your style and it can be beginner friendly, simple, it doesn't have to be complicated. Don't say, I can't do this challenge or this project because I can't make stuff like this or like that person does. Make your own and just let's make this book. And when you get through, you'll have a coffee table book of your style, of your capabilities at this time in 2024 to make this perfectly imperfect coffee table book for slow stitching. Okay, till next time, stay scrap happy.